morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm First Lieutenant Brittany Willard, and I would like to welcome you to the 130th Airlift Wing. As a courtesy, please turn off all cell phones and pagers for the duration of the ceremony. At this time, I'd like to introduce our distinguished guests, the 36th Governor of the Great State of West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice.
Since 1975, the C-130 has been flying through the hills and the valleys, over the homesteads and faraway places to include Afghanistan, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and many other places around the world, providing disaster relief and taking the fight to the enemy. Today, we'll be unveiling Pride of West Virginia, a C-130 Hercules that showcases our dedication to the state in which we live and underscores the value and the support that we receive from the state of West Virginia, from all of our citizens. This naming ceremony serves as a reminder and is an important link between the National Guard and our communities. Pride of West Virginia is one of four C-130s to be named from the 130th Airlift Wing's inventory of aircraft. It will join the spirit of Charleston, the General Mack, and the spirit of the Kanawha Valley. Each day this plane takes off from faraway lands. It will be a, a visual reminder and the prideful, wild, and wonderful West Virginia and all the service members from here that make the sacrifice to support the home state in which we all want to return. Governor Justice, General Hoyer, if you'd move to the aircraft. It is my honor to, to present to you today Pride of West Virginia. Thank you all once again for continued support of the West Virginia National Guard, as well as the men and women of the 130th Airlift Wing serving throughout the world in this great nation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Major General Hoyer, Adjutant General. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, whether it's going anywhere in the world to do our nation's business, whether it's at war or to build partnerships, whether it's to make sure these airplanes fly, respond to emergencies when the people of West Virginia need you guys, or really do a great job at singing the national anthem, you guys are amazing. You do an exceptional job at what you do. Uh, I had the privilege in uh, December of 2016 to be called to go meet with then Governor-elect Justice to, to talk about the National Guard and what you do and the, why you're so important to the state. But one of the important things he wanted to know is what can he do as the commander of the National Guard to help make us better and what can we in the National Guard do that we're not doing to continue to help this state move forward in the direction that we all want it to go and that he's pressed us to move forward on. Uh, we talked specifically about your all's missions and roles, but one of the things we talked about also was the significant role that the National Guard has to play in helping move our state forward economically and helping to make sure that our state grows and diversifies economically. So one of the things I'd like to do today before I introduce the governor is just to talk about a couple of things over the recent period of October 1, uh, the start of the federal fiscal year to now. Uh, originally, I sent the document down to, uh, to the governor to update him, and originally the document said that we've grown 150 full-time technician, federal technician, or AGR positions since October the 1st. But as we went back and looked at our numbers, and as things came in over the last couple of weeks, that number is actually now up to 203. 203 additional federally funded positions since October the 1st of 2017, the start of the federal fiscal year. Some of those are permanent enduring positions. Some of those are temporary technician positions that will last a couple of years. Uh, but 
the point is that's a lot of opportunity and a lot of growth for a lot of people in West Virginia. It represents over $5.7 million in payroll coming into the state of West Virginia, and it represents the opportunity for a lot of young people to get opportunities to come into the Guard, start to work, develop other opportunities within the Guard, or build experience for their resume for civilian jobs elsewhere in our state as our economy continues to move forward in the state of West Virginia. So we thought it was pretty important to lay that out to folks today. Uh, Governor, uh, in front of you represents the face of all the men and women, the 6,500 that you're responsible for, that do the things that we've talked about over the past couple of years since you've been the commander in chief. The people that make things happen, that rescue victims from high water, that make sure these airplanes fly when our nation needs it, but also are good citizens in their communities in West Virginia. So I want just to tell you guys, uh, I've, had, I've been blessed to be the adjutant general, to serve with you and for you to do the things, help you guys do the things that you do. Uh, I want to reinforce the folks here from the media. I'm the front man. I'm the face. That, that's all I am. These people are what make it happen. Uh, it's now my pleasure to uh, someone who wanted to come spend some time with you during this Fourth of July week, uh, and 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 thank you for what you guys do. Uh, the governor of the great state of West Virginia, your commander in chief. The Honorable Jim Justice, who I will tell you folks, when I ask for help for something from the Guard, from the governor of the state of West Virginia, from this governor, you guys get what I ask for. So, Governor, I thank you for your great support, your leadership, and for what you're doing for us here in the National Guard. I want you to look. I made a few notes, but the general has already talked about probably all the notes that I've made. But you know one thing, so I'm going to just speak to you as I do very often from my heart and tell you just this. Oftentimes we easily forget what you do for us. We easily let it just slip away to the back part of our minds when really and truly what you give us is unbelievable. That's why when the general comes to me, in all honesty, any and everything that I can do or any and everything that I will be able to do, I'll do. You know, uh, I saw what you did firsthand. Oftentimes, governors probably don't have the opportunity to see you in action. I saw you recover bodies. I saw you wade the mud. I saw you come to the rescue of family after family after family when they needed you the most. Now, I've not seen you in combat. But I would say, from watching you, you're plenty badasses. That's all there is to it. So, I would tell you from my deepest part of my heart, I thank you. I thank you in every way. The general, or maybe Johnny, just mentioned, you know, that 150 of you are deployed now throughout all different areas of the world, 18 different countries. Just think about this just for a second. Just somebody stop and think. Today, many of us are going to probably go be with their families, go drive through Wendy's, whatever it may be. There's some of you that are hiding behind a rock, eating out of a can 
and maybe even somebody shooting at you. And every freedom and every opportunity of everything we have, we owe to you. I get it. My dad flew a plane, maybe not quite as big as this, a bomber in World War II. I know this is more of a transport type plane. I get it. I really get it. My grandfather on my mom's side, when my mom was one of 10 siblings that never had indoor plumbing, even throughout my life when I visited them all the, throughout my life. Three of her brothers were at war at one time. I'm telling you, I get it. Now, all I can say is just this. I had a great opportunity to be able just in the last few days to see all kinds of you. I've seen the general perform over and over, but I've seen all kinds of branches of the military with me. We renamed our golf tournament, a tribute to the military, a tribute to the military. For crying out loud, it was a great honor for me to be able to do it. But there's so many things that you give and you give, and you give, and you give. I want to say a special thanks and gratitude to Colonel Johnny Ryan. Johnny has battled medical issues, and Johnny is a warrior, and that's why Johnny is back here with us today. A warrior, and we absolutely are so grateful to have him back today. Again, I could talk in so many different directions. The economic impact of what you do for this state is unbelievable. A half a billion dollars. Do you realize what a half a billion dollars is in economic impact to this state? It's astronomical what it is. I wrote down that in the last year we created 195 jobs and the general just said it's already 203, and it just keeps growing. Now, at the end of the day, it's a real honor for me to be here. My mom and dad would be really proud. And so I thank you. I thank you for all you do each and every day. God bless you in every way on the planet. Please be safe. And I love you with all my soul. Thank you so much. So uh, again, Governor, thank you for, uh, for coming today. Senator, Mr. President, thank you for coming and being a part of this. Uh, Again, to all of you guys, thank you guys for what you do. Uh, the governor's got a busy schedule today, but he's going to stay for just a little bit. He'll come up for those of you who want to come up, and uh, he'd like to, to talk to you. If somebody wants to get a picture, he'd like to do that as well. And I will turn it back over to you to close out. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. On behalf of the 130th Airlift Wing and the West Virginia National Guard, we thank you for coming out today. Have a great day.